Tonight, the top two home cooks in Canada will face off in the most spectacular culinary showdown this country has ever seen. You're watching the MasterChef Canada finale. 12 home cooks were chosen. Week after week, they battled to survive. One by one, they were eliminated. Now, only two remain. Tonight's first finalist is Andy, a proud East Coaster from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. It's all about being on the Bay of Fundy where that tide is way out. The scalps are incredible. Thank you, Chef. Andy's diverse palate is informed by his world travels. My wife and I had spent six months in Southeast Asia. After going there and tasting all the flavors and foods that I'd never tried before, it changed my life. His bold flavors placed him at the top again. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Chef. And again. Incredible flavor. You are one to watch. Oh, Andy's unfailing humility and kindness. You got this, Mike. Don't get rattled. I'm good, I'm good. Made him a valued team player. Come on, guys. It's looking great. Keep it going. Keep it going. The red team. The red team. Yes! The red team. Yes! And his drive pushed him past every obstacle. Andy's not a very good baker. I'm going to take Becky down on this one. I'm going to make sure that she knows not to mess with me. So have you shown us that you can do pastry? I think I have. I think you have, too. After always putting family first, Andy is finally daring to pursue his dream. I can see it. I want a very cozy restaurant that really focuses on amazing, modern Nova Scotian cuisine. It's so, so close. I have one more obstacle to get through before this comes a reality. Now, the only person that stands in Andy's way is Becky a teenage prodigy from Sherwood Park, Alberta. She's only 19, the youngest home cook we've ever had in this kitchen. She works for her dad in construction and, until now, has never ventured far from home. Never eaten in a fancy restaurant before. Never been to a fancy restaurant. But her natural instincts impressed right out of the gate. This is your express pass to the top 12. Not that game. Not that game. She continued to develop and grow. Becky. 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 Really sophisticated. You have a lot of talent. Thank you. Are you sure you're 19? <laughs> Never one to waste words. Have you ever cooked an oyster before? Uh, no. Are you not nervous at all? No. Cold as ice. Becky found her voice in the kitchen. Georgie! Prep the jellyfish. Run to the fridge. Along with an ability to lead. Becky, do you want to take charge? Eugene, I'm in charge now. I'm going to whip these boys into shape. She also found her calling. Seeing the way Becky is in the MasterChef kitchen, she seems at home here. She's found her people. Now, Becky is ready to change her life. I'm the first person in my family to graduate high school. Becoming the next MasterChef would be a great achievement for me and my family. And she's not letting anyone stand in her way. Andy should be worried about me because he doesn't even know what I can do. A dream! Tonight, one of you will realize that dream and walk away with $100,000. Yeah. The trophy and the life-changing title of Canada's next Master Chef. There's a group of people who understand more than anyone how hard you've worked to get here. Andy, your wife Jessica, your baby girl Violet, your mom Cheryl, and your dad Stuart. I've got an amazing support system, but so, so nice to see Violet. It's so amazing to have Violet here in the MasterChef kitchen. When I talk to her when she's older about chasing her dreams, I can say, like, you were there when I was chasing mine. Becky, you've got a ton of family support in your corner, too. Your mom, Lisa. <laughs> your dad, Chris. <laughs> your sister, Lucy. And your niece, Mila. <laughs> 
I haven't seen my niece in like months, so she's gone very big. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's not that scary. So, Chris, are you at all surprised that she's made it this far? I am surprised. Yeah. You are. Just because she's so young, but based on the skills, she deserves to be here. Stuart, when did you realize that Andy had such a wonderful gift? Probably it was last year we're down in Costa Rica, and I'm the typical guy, open the fridge, oh, there's nothing in there. And then Andrew opens it up, and lo and behold, we end up with this wonderful meal, and OK, there's something there. So he had his first mystery box challenge in Costa Rica. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Family, thank you for helping us celebrate the end of this incredible journey. Please head up to the gallery. <laughs> I'm so happy to have my family's support today. Just having them here makes me feel more confident. She looks even better from up here. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Andy and Becky, you will have three hours to complete three courses. Your appetizers will be due at the first hour mark, entrees at the two hour mark, and your desserts at the very end of the challenge. That clock will not stop. You will continue to work after your plates are served. We will taste your first two courses in private while you continue cooking. And then we'll ask you to join us for the tasting of your dessert. Just before this cook starts, this is the most nervous I've ever felt. I just get to stay focused and push these dishes out. You will now have 10 minutes in the pantry to gather everything you need. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. The time in the pantry starts. I want to see Andy take this home. These look really beautiful. He really knows how to push himself with food and create things that are masterpieces. Oh, <laughs> get an angry Dungeness crab here. I'm trying to look for the apples. Apples are right here. I'm on Team Becky 110%. Becky's a quiet storm. She's fierce. And when you see her dishes come out, you realize that Becky's in another league. <laughs> this is going to be the craziest battle in MasterChef Canada history. Andy, tell us what you have in store for us. My goal today is to show you where I'm from. So I'm going very east coast. I'm gonna start off with a Halifax Donair. I'm gonna elevate it. It's gonna be a Donair salad. For the main, going with a Nova Scotian hodgepodge. So a traditional chowder of sorts. Finally, as a ode to my mother here, a Newfoundland Towton for dessert. I'm going to use some classical techniques to elevate some very, very humble dishes. Yeah! Take this home. Becky, tell us what you're making tonight. I have a theme of apple orchard, so I'm going to do a quail's egg scotch egg in a bird's nest. For the second course, I'm going to do rabbit two ways, so one of them braised insider, the other one is the rabbit loins. And for the dessert, I'm going to do an apple panna cotta, like a fallen apple. No problem. No big deal. Easy peasy. Becky's like a, a little mad scientist, you know, when it comes to cooking. I can't wait to see it. Becky, where did your apple inspiration come from? I really liked the idea of doing like a fake real fruit for a dessert, so it just kind of evolved from there. <laughs> I know Becky's incredible, but I'm hoping that my experience and the dishes that I'm coming with and just work ethic will be enough to get past Becky today. Andy has travel experience, 12 years on me, so I need to just work harder than Andy today. I've never wanted anything more than this. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. You now have three hours, but for the last time, your time starts. Andy versus Becky, it doesn't get more exciting than this. My whole menu is apples and kind of naturey things. I'm using a lot of fall rustic flavors, and I want to demonstrate how versatile an apple actually is. 
I have a lot of components and techniques to do today, so I have to really push myself and work really fast today. I cook with my family all the time, so this is just another day in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Keep it going, Andy. I've been really fortunate to be able to travel a lot. Throughout this whole competition, I've been drawing on flavors from my travels. But what I'm doing today is bringing it back home. I want to show the judges not where I've been, but where I'm from. Let's go Dartmouth. <laughs> Becky is doing a scotched quail's egg, which is a British classic. Every pub, every little cafe, they will sell a scotched egg. Tricky business, though, because that quail egg can overcook by the time the crust on the outside is cooked. Those are adorable. Look how small they are. I make scotch eggs at home all the time. My dad and my sister really enjoy them. Eggs live in nests, so I'm putting it back into nature. <laughs> Andy, my man, how are you? Yeah. Question for you. Yes. How many Dornaires have you eaten in your lifetime? Uh, I've probably eaten more than I actually remember because there tend to be a late night snack uh, after the bar. But... <laughs> so for people who have never had a Donaire, can you describe one? It's street meat. It is a ground lamb kofta, like a big, huge kofta of ground meat that they shave off. It goes onto a piece of pita bread, get some garlic, onions, and then this strange, wonderful sauce that goes on it with made of evaporated milk, vinegar, and sugar. I'm elevating that, adding some champagne vinegar and some tahini. Well, I'm gonna leave you to it. Elevated, right? Yeah, I will. Thanks, Chef. Good job, Let's bye. go, Andy. Let's go. Yeah, Andy. Becky, you're doing amazing. Those look great. <laughs> Becky's family is going to be absolutely shocked when they see how much she has grown as a cook. <laughs> Becky. Hi. What are you doing now? Spiralizing. No kidding. What's that? For the nest? Yeah. What's the cook on the quail's egg? Uh, we'll find out when they come out the deep fry. I don't want to see a dry egg yolk. Okay. All done? Yeah. Have you cut into one? No. Are you going to do that? Later. Later. When Becky cooks, she is laser focused and anything around her is non-existent. I got a feeling that you want me to go away. Well, I got you things know? to do. You got things to do. All right, get the hint. <laughs> 30 minutes! Solid, Becky, solid, like a rock. Andy is incredibly intense. Whew, he moves fast. He's very competitive, but he's not gonna undermine you. He's like a stealthy competitor that you respect, but he very much wants to win. Look, Becky's about to fry her first bird's nest using parsnip, sweet potato, and potato. Is she mixing all three starches together? It looks like she's doing that. That's not a good idea because sweet potato has a lot of sugar in it, which means that it will burn before the other potatoes are cooked. Becky is, like, really sweating. I think it's starting to get to her a little bit. Oh, Becky's bird's nest looks burnt. I'm just feeling a lot of pressure because I have a lot to get done. I've never seen her look so fast. I've never taken on this much before. I'm feeling very overwhelmed right now. Andy has his lamb loin in the oven, roasting off nicely. His pita chip and roasted eggplants are well underway. Everything he's doing is calculated and precise. Nice, Andy. You're in a groove here. This donair salad has a lot going on. How's it taste, Andy? Really good. This is stressful. <laughs> 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes left for your appetizers. Becky is already starting to plate her first course. I've never taken on this much before. I'm just nervous about the time. Ooh. Yep, sir. Andy's lamb loin needs to be medium rare. It's very tricky because of its small size. It's perfect. I'm so happy, such a relief. This is looking incredible. Yes. Smells good in here. Yes, gorgeous. Andy's starting to plate now. And Becky, she's already finished her appetizers. Five minutes, you only have five minutes left. What's that, Becky? Rabbit. 
I see Becky's strategy right now. She has made her appetizer easier to prep because her main course is very intricate. Becky right now is breaking down her rabbit saddle. The bones on a rabbit are very small. You have to have the hands of a surgeon to be able to do that. One minute! Servers are coming! I'm focused on me. Becky's gonna do her thing. I've gotta do what I gotta do to get these dishes out. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! Andy and Becky, please keep working. Your appetizers look fantastic. The judges will now head into the banquet room to privately taste both appetizers, while the home cooks continue with the entree round. I'm happy with the appetizer dish. It's like a thing in nature, and I transformed it into food. My appetizer looked great. These are massive flavors, and I hope the judges love them. The first dish is Becky's Scotch quail egg with pork and apple coating on a nest of potatoes and parsnips. I really enjoy the presentation because it's so natural. But I don't think you two got the better deal out of this because there seems to be a color variation. Some of the potatoes are burnt. Let's not forget, Becky had extra time. Yeah, she could have re-spiraled the potatoes, refried them, maybe a little bit less time in the fryer. Okay, let's try it. Yes, some of the potatoes are a little bit charred, but this dish is absolutely delicious. You've got the pickled pearl onions, you've got the charred leeks, the peeled cherry tomatoes. Those ingredients really help to counteract the fattiness of the other ingredients, and that's really intelligent cooking. I think it showcases a great deal of technique. Seasoning on the sausage meat, I thought, was spot on. The flavors are beautiful. The scotch egg, done to perfection. I'm very impressed. Next is Andy's appetizer, a Halifax Donair salad with spiced lamb coctas, seared lamb loin, pita chips, and evaporated milk tahini dressing. I think he's done a wonderful job reimagining a classic handheld dish. Let's taste. A loin of lamb is a delicious cut of meat. The kofta kebab is full of deep, long flavors, and that special sauce works very well with this dish. If you take the mint and this powder that he has on the plate, put that together. The flavors are amazing. Overall, this dish really conveys who Andy is and, more importantly, how far he's come in this competition. I think we have a real race on our hands here. Let's go see how they're doing. I like not knowing how they're tasting at their appetizer one, so I can just focus on what I'm doing. The main course is a Nova Scotian hodgepodge. It's basically a pot with a bunch of cream in it and every fresh vegetable that's pulled from the garden that day. And I'm gonna elevate that with sweetbreads and Dungeness crab. These things are amazing. And then finish it with a crab bisque on top. Andy's menu is ambitious, but I know Andy can pull it off. Gotta push, gotta push. I feel like things are going really well right now. I just need to keep pushing. Every element has to be perfect because there's not a lot of room to hide. For the entree, I'm making rabbit two ways with Jerusalem artichoke puree. I have to braise a rabbit, which I already started. Oh my goodness, what is that called again? Call fat. Call fat. You're putting your rabbit and your apple in there, yeah? Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. Call's fat is the fat around a cow's stomach. It's just a great way of keeping things together with <laughs> meat. And also add moisture and flavors. At home, don't have the equipment, don't have the access to all these ingredients. Like three months ago, it was impossible to become a chef for me. And now it's super close. Yes, yes, Becky, yes, Becky. 
30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. OK, Boo Bear, let's go. Oh, Andy, that looks delish. A soubise is simply an onion sauce. You take lots of onions and slowly cook them without any color. Oh, God, it's going to be so good. This dish is much more reserved and focused on classical French techniques. Looks good, Andy. Looks good, bud. I want to win because I really want to build a name for myself on the food scene in Halifax. Looks great, bud. Looks good. Andy. Jeff. Tell me exactly what you're doing. I'm doing a uh, Nova Scotia hodgepodge. You're putting crab in it, and I'm going to have some crispy sweetbreads for texture, and just like a play on surf and turf, really. What is the most difficult element for you at this dish? A lot of the food from the East Coast is pretty basic in nature, so I'm trying to, trying to elevate. Good luck with it. Thank you. I really hope that they like it. Becky seems like she's calmed down now. Nice dabbing. Great Good dabbing. dabbing. Good dabbing, Becky. <laughs> There's a lot of pitfalls when you're cooking rabbit. The meat is very lean, not a lot of fat to it, easy to overcook. But if you do it right, I can tell you, a rabbit could be absolutely delicious. Those look beautiful, Bex. Thanks. 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, the servers will be coming for your entrees. There are elements in my main that take some time. And I'm all over the place. Someone just keep an eye on this to make sure it doesn't go over. We got eyes on the cream for you, bud. We got it for you, Andy. This is incredibly intense, and I'm feeling that right now. Andy needs to conserve his energy because he still has another course. Come on, Andy. 18 yeah, minutes. I'm, good. I'm there. I'm there. If Andy lets the stress get to him and makes a mistake, there's no turning back. She got the flower might look that I'm completely out of control, but I've learned in this competition that greatness happens on the edge of chaos. Yeah, get the subi ready to go, so we're in good shape here. We're in very good shape. 10 minutes! Service in 10 minutes! Looks like a hundred grand hodgepodge. <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing a lot of intensity from Andy right now. Part of the crab bisque, the way that I'm making it, is roasting the shells in the oven, putting it into a stock pot. I'll incorporate some cream, reduce it down further so it's really thick and dense, and hopefully have that really pungent crab flavor. Two minutes! Servers are coming in two minutes! Go, Andy, you're doing good, buddy. Plating is absolutely key. Everything I put out has to be restaurant quality. Incredible focus on these two home cooks. There's a lot of pressure right now. I can feel my hands shaking as I put the puree in the plate. Yes, Becky. These last seconds are completely chaotic. Let's go, Andy. Come on, Andy. Right, let's do it. I'm trying to get the microgreens on there just to give it a refining touch. Come on, Andy. Yeah. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Andy and Becky, keep working on your desserts. Please excuse us while we taste your entrees. Last one, guys, last one! Yes. The clock is not stopping. I wish I had about 30 more seconds just to clean off the plates, but I'm still hoping the flavors are there and it's enough to impress the judge. I'm really happy with the apple flavors in the entree. They're infused into the rabbit, so you can't really miss them. The first entree the judges will taste is Becky's. Rabbit saddle, caramelized apple and fennel wrapped in call fat, and cider braised rabbit legs on a Jerusalem artichoke puree. The sauce could have been a little bit, bit thicker. It lacks a bit of color, but it smells great. Her composition is actually very chef-inspired. The cook on Becky's loin of rabbit is spot on perfect. And then the leg, moist, but fall off the bone flaky. This is a dish that embodies her thoughtfulness she's put into the dish. It's things that grow together, go together. The archer puree is smooth, silky. It, it's not rich, but it's got flavor. Mm -hmm. She cooks with so much instinct. She nailed it. Next up is Andy's entree, a Dungeness crab and sweetbread hodgepodge. 
on an onion soubise topped with a crab bisque. It's colorful, but you know, it doesn't look like a main course. Is it a soup? There's nothing to bind this dish together. You know what I have on my plate? Dirt. All bets are off. I just get to push these last dishes out. Good job, Andy. Just stay focused. And in the dining room, Chef Claudio's got the dirt on Andy's entree. That's from the hydroponics. It does look tasty, though, and that could save everything. Oh, look at the shine on the sweetbreads. I think Andy did a wonderful job at bringing the ocean and the land together. I mean, the crab is perfectly cooked. The sweetbreads are succulent. His soubise onion sauce at the bottom, the creaminess is outstanding. The crab bisque is really full of deep, rich flavor. We come to expect both flavors from Andy, and this dish delivers. Two great appetizers, followed by two great entrees. So there's a lot riding on this dessert tonight. Wow, look at the energy in this kitchen. Got it. I really can't feel how exhausted I am right now. We haven't stopped. What you making there, Becky? Twix. My dessert is gonna be a fallen apple, like one that's freshly fallen off a tree. It's an apple panna cotta. The core is going to be an apple jelly with toasted pineapple seeds, and then a swig made out of this dough and a sugar leaf. If any one of these steps goes wrong, it's going to ruin the entire dessert. It's a lot to do with just one hour. What is that, Andy? It's going to be a crumb. I know Becky is going to go very high concept with her dessert. So what I'm going to do is go homey and gooey and delicious. Hey, Mama. Hi, Boo. Since I was a kid, Mom would always make this thing that they call in Newfoundland a tout, basically dough, fried in a pan with a bunch of butter and served with baked beans. What I'm doing here is incorporating molasses and sugar and going to turn it into a donut. This is for my mom and my whole family in Newfoundland. She's really pleased to see me do this. The panna cotta, I would say, is probably the most difficult element of Becky's dish. The key is to make sure that you don't put too much gelatin into the mixture for your panna cotta, otherwise it'll make it way too stiff. I have to get the malted pastry cream out of the way because it has to cool in the fridge. What is happening? Just take it out and use a knife. This is ridiculous. Breathe, dude, breathe. This should be incredibly easy to just put plastic wrap over this pastry cream, and I'm battling with it. <laughs> Lots of time. Don't lose it now. Good job, Andy. Yes, it's a nice hustle. I think I'm just exhausted. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. I want to show the judges a completely different type of dessert. I can never afford culinary school, so the only food knowledge that I had was through cookbooks. And now this experience has opened up a whole new world for me. Yeah, I don't think Becky's future is in construction anymore. Hello, Becky. So what do you make me for pudding? <laughs> As you know, pudding. That's what we Brits call dessert. What are you making for dessert? I'm going to do a fallen apple. So it's an apple panna cotta with an apple jelly core with some toasted pine nuts in it. Nice. And then this is going to be like the ground. The soil? Yeah. Wonderful. Is there anything a little extra that you're going to do to this dessert? And I'm going to do a gel glaze. And the glaze is going to be going onto the apple itself? Yeah. Sounds like the perfect ending to your apple-themed three-course menu. <laughs> Smells good, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. You got this, Becky. You got this, Becky. I have to start working that dough and incorporating the molasses and brown sugar mixture I have. 
Fold it over as many times so you have those layers, and then just let the dough rest a little bit to get softer. Annie. Chef. What's going on with dessert? I'm gonna do uh, a Newfoundland donut. Newfoundland donuts. <laughs> oh, is that the one with just the hole? <laughs> I've been to Newfoundland. I've never had a Newfoundland donut. So tell me, what is a Newfoundland donut? It's one of my favorite memories of having this fried piece of bread. They call it a touton. Okay. And dipping it in baked beans. Okay, I love baked beans. <laughs> this one is... Uh, uh, molasses kind of folded into a donut dough, fried with some brulee rhubarb. Okay. There's going to be a nice crumb. I'm going to yes. try to make this more homey, make it remind you guys of your childhood, and just make it feel ooey gooey. Don't mess up. I won't. Yeah, keep it going, Andy. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. I chose some pine nuts and put them in the jelly core, and they represent the seeds in a natural apple. Brilliant. How ingenious is that? The apple jelly is not set enough, so the pine nuts keep floating back up. It's like a whack-a-mole. I have no idea if this dessert is going to work until, like, the last minute. Five minutes left. This will be your last five minutes in the Master Chef Canada Kitchen. They're perfectly golden brown. If you have extra donuts, throw a couple of them up here. <laughs> She's just taking a small piece of her panna cotta and doing a little test of her glaze. This dessert has to be perfect. I'm going to ditch the glaze. I don't really like it. Look, look, Becky just threw away her apple glaze. She's just thrown it out. Wow. No more apple syrup? No. Two minutes, you only have two, two minutes, minutes left. Two minutes. I know my daughter, she's focused, she knows what she's doing, and she's gonna get it done. So close, I can't believe this is real. I'm just a bag of nerves right now. Insanely proud of Andy, and I think he nailed it. I can't believe I actually just did that. <laughs> Amazing, guys, you did it. Andy, Becky, congratulations to you both. <laughs> really amazing. It's time to taste your third and final course. Please follow us into the banquet room. I just have to leave it in the hands of the judges and hope that everything's OK. I did every single thing I could, and I'm happy with the result. I just hope that all the dishes tell the story of who I am and the direction I want to take food. Andy and Becky, before we taste, we'd like to tell you how you've done so far. Let's start with the appetizers. Becky. We love your playful presentation. It's like something that I would do, which means it's brilliant. Unfortunately, the three nests that you served us were inconsistent. Mine was a little burnt. Now, Andy, we loved how you took the Donaire, a late night Halifax street food, and turned it into an elegant starter. Big, bold flavors. And Andy, I think it really honored your Halifax roots. Thanks, Chef. Let's move on to the entrees, starting with Becky's. I found the plating very intuitive, and the cook on the rabbit was spot on. Frankly, it was one of the finest dishes I've had in this competition. Thank you. Andy, you took us back to Nova Scotia with your entree. It was tasty, colorful, and inviting. But even though I knew it was a hodgepodge, 
I still wanted one main component to anchor the dish. But it was delicious. The flavors you developed in your sauce were superb. Thank you, Chef. Hearing Becky's feedback and my feedback, I don't know who has the advantage. It's anyone's game right now. So as you can probably tell, we're very excited about the final leg of this journey. I'm happy to present this dessert, but it's nerve-wracking getting the feedback. Becky, please describe your dessert. My dessert is a fallen apple. It's a apple panna cotta with an apple jelly, a soil, a sable twig, and a sugar leaf. Where's the glaze? I just thought it would be too fake, that red color from food coloring. So I just wasn't comfortable serving it. Nothing wrong with that. If it doesn't belong there, don't put it there. Let's dig in. The flavors are somewhat familiar, yet unique and different. Familiar as far as the panna cotta with the apple jelly within it. The soil has a deep, rich flavor to it that is such a strong anchor to this dish. This is one of the most original desserts I've had anywhere. There's a lot going on, but you can sense what is going on. So nothing is overpowering. And I like the journey you have taken us on with the apple. All right, Andy, tell us about your dessert. It's a malt pastry cream with a molasses brown sugar rolled Newfoundland Towton, some brulee rhubarb, and then wheat cereal and ginger snap crumb. Looking at it, I would love to dig into that. Let's try it out. That rich, decadent, malted milk pastry and that familiar taste of rhubarb, which is slightly acidic, but so complementary and beautiful. This is a titan of Towton's. I didn't think that rhubarb would work with port because one is very sweet and elegant and the other is very rustic. But that marriage does come together. I think it's one of your finest moments. I do wish that there was maybe a sorbet to cut through the dense nature of the donut. But it really delivers. Thank you, Chef. However this turns out, you should both be very proud of what you've done tonight. We're going to need some time. Chef. Thanks. I'm exhausted, but I feel happy that I, think I hopefully pulled it off. I put my entire self into these dishes today, and I hope it's enough to win. I tell you, they have not made it easy for us. They were neck and neck, each with their own unique style, their own unique take on ingredients. I pushed hard. The flavors were there. I think I had a good story around my dishes. I did everything that I could. I want it so badly. And they're both very, very passionate. I might be 19, but age never matters when you're in the kitchen. There's elements of brilliance. There were some flaws. Winning Master of Canada would be the best thing that's ever happened to me. You have to find elements of incredible strengths and weigh it up against some of the weaknesses. I think one cook told a story that I want to hear over and over again. I would agree. Andy and Becky, it takes courage to follow your dreams. A few months ago, you put your lives on hold to do just that, here in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Week after week, your skill and creativity were put to the test. And you didn't just survive, you flourished. Both of you have earned the privilege to come up here and change places with us. I've fought hard to get where I am now. This is a life-changing experience. <laughs> I think I'm only now starting to truly believe that this isn't a fluke, that I belong here. Tonight, you took us on two very personal culinary journeys. We had to consider every component, every technique, and the overall impression that each of you left us with. One of you showed 
slightly more innovation and craftsmanship. That home cook will win $100,000, this trophy, and the life-changing title. Canada's new master chef is... Becky. I'm the new master of Canada. You did it. It's real, you're not dreaming. <laughs> this trophy is gonna change like every aspect of my life. I can finally pursue my dream of becoming a chef. Becky, congratulations. <laughs> wow. oh. Becky, she is a 19-year-old phenom, but I'm still really proud of how we responded today to know that I will push in those difficult moments. So just get ready, it's gonna be a big ride. I realized that dreams are possible, they're not just dreams. <laughs> I'm not going back to tile setting. I just want to cook in a restaurant. <laughs>